It's Wednesday, February 16th, and this is now on HNN. Sources say a woman has died after being assaulted with a tree trunk outside the Kapolei police station. Russia's claim that it's withdrawing some troops following drills around Ukraine has been met with skepticism from Western leaders. These are not small changes. Researchers say the U.S. could see a century's worth of sea rise in just 30 years. We'll tell you what that means for the islands. This season is going to include the Honolulu Hawaii debut of Hamilton. These stories, plus after the pandemic shut down the state, Broadway returns to Hawaii. Details coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. This is now. We want to get started with this live picture from the nation's capital where a lot of minds are focused on those tensions with Russia. Russia claims that it's withdrawing some troops following drills around Ukraine, but the U.S. now saying there has been no meaningful movement yet so far. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is now. We haven't going to have much, much more on that story in just a moment, but let's get to some developing news regarding the pandemic. That's right. As COVID cases continue their steady decline nationwide, NBC News has learned the CDC may soon loosen its indoor mask mandate. Several NBC sources familiar with the matter say the CDC is considering a new benchmark on mask safety, basing it on the level of severe disease and hospitalizations within a community. Nothing has been finalized yet, but an announcement could come as early as next week. Dr. Anthony Fauci is still stressing caution. You got to be careful about that. You know, you don't want to be declaring victory prematurely. The news comes as a growing number of states are already easing mask restrictions. A mask mandate remains in place in Hawaii. The state health department is reporting 12 more COVID related fatalities today, along with 203 new infections. The breakdown of cases includes 153 on Oahu, 28 on Maui and Kauai and the Big Island are reporting single digits. We've learned a woman has died in an assault outside the Kapolei police station last night. Emergency personnel responded to the scene at Kamokila Boulevard around 7 p.m. First responders treated the woman, said to be in her 40s, and rushed her to the hospital in critical condition. HPD records show that a 35-year-old named Michael Armstrong was arrested at the substation just before 8 p.m. Police sources said the woman died after the suspect used a tree trunk to attack her. At this time, a motive remains unclear. We'll continue to follow the story, bring you any updates on your H&N digital platform. Now, Russia claims it is pulling back some of its troops from its border with Ukraine, but Western leaders are calling for proof. For the latest on the situation there, let's bring in Hawaii News Now's chief national political analyst, Greta Van Suster and now Greta, is Vladimir Putin fulfilling his promise on pulling back forces? Well, I don't know. The United States certainly hasn't seen it. And Secretary of State Blinken has said that he hasn't seen any indication and that uh, he wouldn't trust Putin. Essentially, he said he wouldn't trust Putin. He wants to see it with his own eyes. Secretary General of NATO, likewise, uh, says that he hasn't seen a de-escalation. You know, what Putin says uh, may just not be reality. And look, you know, the United States and NATO just want some proof. But it's important, you know, if, if Russia does de-escalate, that's a good sign, meaning that he may be leaning towards de-escalation, leaning towards perhaps a d diplomatic solution to this. But if he says he's pulling troops away and doesn't, you know, it's just Putin being Putin again. Now, NATO defense ministers have been meeting. What have it, uh, they been discussing? They've been discussing, you know, whether or not they should send more troops to Romania um, for the for starters. Because look, um, Ukraine is not a member of NATO, but some of the nations surrounding uh, Ukraine are NATO nations, and they're, they're, what they're doing is preparing in the event that uh, Russia does invade Poland. I mean, does invade Ukraine, is they want to have the NATO troops positioned so that they can protect those NATO nations. Now we're getting we're giving support to Ukraine, but there aren't U.S. troops who are going to fight, and no NATO troops are going to fight at least not right now. But we'll, we have to do is protect those countries that are NATO members that are in the region.
And Ukraine was uh, the target of an apparent cyber attack. What do we know about this and who's responsible? Well, Putin says he didn't do it. And uh, of course, nobody right now believes it. There is no proof that it was Putin right now. Um, you know, it could well be some rogue people with inside uh, Russia. Putin has given safe harbor to others who have hacked even in the United States. Uh, Russia has hacked Ukraine in the past. So everybody and his brother is suspicious that the two banks that were hit and the defense ministry in Ukraine that was hit was done by Putin, by Russia. But we don't have proof right now. The White House is saying through Jen Psaki who was the press secretary, saying that it's right out of Putin's playbook. So, yes, everybody's suspicious Putin. Do, is there 100% proof at this moment? No. All right. Here in the U.S., you know, Congress has been considering severe sanctions against Russia. What's the latest on that? Well, there's a battle over sanctions. I mean, everybody's on the same page. It's that nobody wants Russia to uh, invade Ukraine, and the U.S. is going to have sort of a strong reaction. Strong reaction, though, will come in the form of sanctions. But the big debate on Capitol Hill is when do you impose those sanctions? There, there are a number of Republicans who want to do it now as a deterrent, but a number of Republicans don't, and a lot of Democrats don't, because they want us because they say if you if you impose sanctions now, that you don't have any leverage for bargaining later. Um, but that's the debate that's going on right now. But you've got the House. Um, the Senate Majority Leader Schumer, the Senate Minority Leader McConnell, both issuing statements last night that they stand with Ukraine. But it's a question of also, you know, what sanctions to impose. But most importantly, it's when do you impose those sanctions? Before Putin does something to deter him or afterwards? All right, we'll be watching that. What you News Now's Chief National Political Analyst, Greta Van Susteren. Always great to see you, Greta. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. All right, let's take you live outside. Take a look at Oahu's iconic coastline. All this beauty is under threat of climate change. A new federal report says sea level rise is showing what America's coast will be dealing with in the next three decades. And this information is shocking. Our Casey Lund breaks down all the data for us from the North Shore. Let's toss it over to him. Aloha from Ehukai Beach here on Oahu's North Shore. It's a place we come often to show you the serious erosion problems so many property owners are faced with along this coast. Now, those problems are only going to get worse when we talk about the amount of sea level rise we're expecting, according to that federal report. Now, some places are going to have worse sea level rise on the East Coast and the Atlantic. They're expecting anywhere from 14 to 18 inches over the next three decades. Here in Hawaii, it's a little bit better with around six to eight inches expected over the next 30 years. That will cause tide and storm surge heights to increase and reach further inland. The impacts will will depend upon what we do to mitigate against those. If we can keep our temperatures in check, the overall amount of sea level rise looks to be, uh, you know, related. And it's, it's, it's something that we will be able to deal with in this country and find solutions to live with the amount of sea level rise that's projected to occur. Director of UH's Sea Level Center, Dr. Philip Thompson, says this study doesn't even factor in the powerful swells that we deal with here in the Central Pacific. So even though the rise may be smaller compared to other parts of the country, the impacts to our shorelines will be great. These are not small changes, and even though it seems like a foot, nah, maybe it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but when you go to like a handful of impacts per year to 50 or 60 per year, uh, that really starts to add up. If we don't curb our future emissions, things will get even worse by the end of the century. We could expect to see anywhere between 1.5 and 5 feet of sea level rise. Some of the hardest hit areas might be the outlying northwestern Hawaiian islands, places like Papahanao, Mokuakea, and several atolls that serve as important habitat for marine life, like monk seals, sea turtles, and seabirds. Reporting on Oahu's North Shore, I'm Casey Lund. Now back to you. An important update to pass along, a House committee has advanced a bill to raise the state's minimum wage. The bill would raise Hawaii's minimum wage to $11 per hour next year. The minimum wage would then go up $1 every year until it hits $18 in 2030. The state's tip credit would also increase over the same time, so employers could pay greater amounts below minimum wage to tipped employees. The bill goes before the full House, then the Financial Committee. Many Americans ditched cable TV years ago thinking they could save money by subscribing to streaming networks. Lilia Luciano adds up the prices and explains why they're going up. Keeping up with content in the age of streaming isn't just a time suck, it's expensive. I've realized, you know, once you have a few of them, it becomes almost like, like a car payment. 
any streaming platform that you can imagine, I'm subscribing to right now. As streaming services multiply, so does the monthly bill for viewers. I love this man. Amazon announced it's bumping its annual Prime subscription by $20, and Netflix raised its monthly rate by up to $2. The company hopes it's a small price to pay for picking what you want to watch or binging new seasons of The Crown or Ozark. Money, that which separates the haves from the have-nots. Where does it end? It ends at which uh, point where consumers stop, uh, they, they start leaving the service or they stop subscribing. But I think that's a ways off, especially if you're raising prices incrementally over time. Entertainment researcher that, Paul Erickson says the price hikes are part inflation and part competition. Services really see content as their weapon to ensure that people subscribe and they stay subscribed uh, in this dog-eat-dog -dog environment. In 2021, Netflix spent an estimated $17 billion on content, including Oscar-nominated films. But experts say the next move is getting more live sports on streaming apps, and that will just continue to push prices up. Are we at that point where it's more expensive to subscribe to all these streamers than the old cable? I mean, you selected a lot of this uh, content and these services and what you're getting for that money, it's more relevant to you. And that's the important part. Lilia Luciano, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, mine's certainly more expensive because in my apartment complex, it's free. And I have every one of yeah. those that were listed. I know we share a couple. It was but... kind of mind blowing to see them all with all those prices because you don't really add it up in your head. No. And it but does see, oh. add up. It's like she said, a car payment. Yeah. All right. Speaking of Netflix, we want to play a little game. Ashley's going to play along. She has not seen this script. And I want you guys to play along, too. All right. What is the most watched Netflix show, reality show in Hawaii? Any guesses just on that? No. no? There's okay. so many. First hint, it's hosted by part-time residents to Oahu, Nick and Vanessa Lachey. Oh, I know. You know? Yeah. Oh, let me give the other hint okay. for everyone yeah. else. All right. That's it, easy. Also premiered this month in honor of Valentine's Day. Yes. It's a dating reality show, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. What do you think it is? Love is Blind. You're right. Love is Blind is the most watched reality show in the islands. Three states across the country also did the most searching for that show. The most popular, though, Too Hot to Handle with 10 states. Also good. Yeah, this net, this data is coming from the Dish Network. Um, yeah, you watched them both. I had to watch the trailer for Love is Blind. Uh -huh. And what a concept. Yeah. Who's thinking this stuff up? Yeah. Well, remember we told you Tinder's doing something similar with a blind date yeah. feature? Yeah. 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 And then Too Hot to Handle, I think there's actually some people from Oahu that are on that show. There was one guy from Hawaii, Patrick, in this latest season. I uh, watched way too much. Don't give any spoiler <laughs> alerts. But Sorry. we've got to talk about something else coming to one of those streaming services. Yeah, right? this is for us 80s kids, yes. Jonathan. So one this of so the me. upcoming movies currently heading to Disney Plus later this year is a brand new live action CGI hybrid adaptation of the popular 1980s animated classic, Ch -ch 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 you did it before Rescue me. You Rangers. did it before me. So just like Roger Rabbit, this new Disney Plus film takes place in a world where tunes are actors who film their shows on elaborate sets so they coexist with humans in a regular world. Interesting. Yeah, I read a little bit more on it and they're coming back as a cast, like all the characters, and they're having to work out some relationship oh, drama. Man. Yes, so another flashback, right? Yeah, an iconic sports car went back to the future, was discontinued. Well, now it's ready to rev up some new business. So the DeLorean Motor Company announced its official return on social media this week with a new teaser for its reimagined DeLorean. So the company says the new electric vehicle is set to premiere this year. And from the teaser, it appears the new DeLorean will keep its signature gull wing doors. Now yes. the car was famously used in the Back to the Future film trilogy but was short-lived. Pro production lasted only between 1981 and 1983. That means it was no longer being made when the first Back to the Future hit theaters in 1985. I've watched both recent DeLorean documentaries. They are awesome. I can't remember which streaming service they are. And as soon as I saw this, I signed up for the email alerts uh -huh. because... I'm just Do hoping, it. I'm hoping I'll be able to afford it, but I doubt it. I really, really It'll doubt be really it. Cool to it was see pretty expensive road. when it was in the 80s, and I don't think, I don't think it's going to make yeah. my pocketbook, no. Well, I'm glad you signed up. We'll yeah, find out. And, and like everyone says, how can you park that in Hawaii? <laughs> yeah. Like you can't go, whoosh, you have to back in. Yeah. And, no, not going to. Hopefully you have a 
T-top. Right. Yeah. All right, take you live outside. Check it out. It is Beijing right there. Live look at the Olympic flame. 14 degrees right now in Beijing. Nothing like that here in the islands. Let's turn it over to Guy Hoggy with an update on your forecast. We've got this disturbance, right? It's going to sit here to the east and northeast of the state, and that will provide us with, uh, you know, scattered showers from time to time. Through tomorrow, we could see some heavy downpours, especially for the east end of the state. And there is a, there's even a chance for isolated thunderstorms today and tomorrow as well. And you can see that moisture just kind of sticks around all the way through Saturday before slowly it pulls away on Sunday. Although, like I said, the Big Island likely to see some scattered showers from that probably into the early part of next week. So today and tomorrow we could see some isolated heavy downpours, especially for the east end of the state. And those passing showers will continue through Saturday. Lighter winds taking over on Friday, easing up through the early part of next week. All right, you guys, it's time for another Olympic update. Let's take a look at that medal count. Norway continues to lead in both gold and overall medals. The U.S. slipped to fourth in medals behind Norway, the ROC, and Germany. Ryan Shimabukuro took an unexpected route from Kalihi to Beijing. The speed skating coach just won gold with one of his skaters, Aaron Jackson. She's one of the six athletes he's coaching in the Winter Games. We spoke to him today about the accomplishment. All the emotions just came came rushing out. We were so happy. She was stunned. She, you know, she was speechless. You know, breaks down and cries, and then a second later, she's fine. You know, and it wasn't until the very next night when she actually got her gold medal, where all the emotions really came out. You know, when you feel the weight of the gold medal, and uh, you see the flag raising, and you hear the national anthem, and you feel your national pride. Uh, you know, I can't speak for her, but. I, I know for me, like, it, it, it's definitely a feeling I never get tired of. Shimabukuro started skating at the Ice Palace as a kid and had his own Olympic aspirations. His family even moved to the mainland to support his dream, inspired by Olympic great Eric Haydn. His own skating career was derailed by health issues, but he's had a huge impact as a coach. For me, the Olympics is just more symbolic of, you know, chasing after a dream. You know, a little kid from Hawaii, from Kalihi, you know, six years old, watching the greatest speed skater ever on TV, you know, gets gets inspired by this by this moment, by by the greatest speed skating uh, Olympic uh, uh, accomplishment ever, you know, and who would have thought that 40 something years later, you know, here I would be standing where I am. Another one of his skaters, Joey Mantia, also recently won a bronze medal. He's coaching three more races coming up with more chances to medal. We want to wish him the best of luck. Today at the Games, it's a rematch between rivals as the women of Team USA Hockey take on Canada for gold. Plus, Michaela Schifrin is one of the favorites in the Combine. Don't miss it. Coverage starts at 3 p.m. on KHNL. All right, favorite part of the show. Let's see what the internet is talking about. And we're still talking about the Super Bowl, of course, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that halftime performance. Yeah. And fresh off that halftime performance, Mary J. Blige will be joining back on stage a whole group of hip-hop artists. This is for the headline of the Root Picnic with the group Root. The annual festival is back in person this year for the first time since 2019. Other artists include Kirk Franklin and Rick Ross. Root Picnic takes place in Philadelphia in June. And if you want to go, tickets go on sale on Friday. I should also mention, if you want to see something cool, just scroll down on our Facebook feed on H&N. We streamed earlier the Rams parade in L.A. Oh. Okay. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. All those performers should be back out on tour again. They're oh, yeah. So it great. was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. Well, Valentine's Day is over, but a huge diamond is up for grabs for a pretty penny. Now, it's called the De Beers Cullinan Blue, and it's the biggest vivid blue diamond and could sell at auction for at least $48 million. Now, the 15.1 carat gem is also the largest 
internally flawless set cut vivid blue diamond that the Gemological Institute of America has ever appraised. The GIA has also deemed the diamond as fancy vivid blue, which is the highest color grading possible. Now it's expected to be auctioned off in Hong Kong in April. I missed it for Valentine's Day for you. <laughs> so sorry, so sorry. Next Your favorite year, color. Next year, next year, next year. Maybe to drop a little in price. Right. All right, guys, Broadway is back in Hawaii, and Billy V is here to give us a preview in today's Good News Now. As a matter of fact, Bruce Granath is here to tell us about the shows and how the industry has adjusted to the pandemic. Good morning, Bruce. Kind of give us the lowdown. First of all, how long has Broadway in Hawaii been producing shows in Honolulu, and what are the productions that are coming? Uh, we have been producing shows in Honolulu for a little more than 20 years. Shows like Wicked and Phantom and um, Les Miserables. And we couldn't be more excited that this season is going to include the Honolulu Hawaii debut of Hamilton. Yes. Now you've also We got also have. Go ahead. We also have uh, uh, Beautiful, the Carol King musical will open in April. Uh, then we have Jersey Boys in September. Uh, Hamilton will play over the holidays, December and January, and then we have Cats in June of next year. Okay, I'm going to ask you kind of uh, about uh, season passes coming up in just a little bit, or season tickets, but uh, first of all, as a producer of shows, of touring Broadway shows, how have you had to po a pivot with COVID? You know, it's been an extraordinary uh, experience for the entire industry. The industry's really come together and done everything it needed to do to survive the last couple of years. More than anything, I think everybody has appreciated how much people love and need and want live entertainment. Um, and then for everybody who works in this industry, whether they work in the box office or in wardrobe or stagehands or on stage, uh, you appreciate the privilege that you have to do this business, which is bringing this live experience uh, to people. And we've been very fortunate in Hawaii. We're just getting ready to, we're still a couple uh, months away from opening Beautiful, and it looks like the timing is gonna be perfect. So we're, we're really, really fortunate that way. Let's talk about season tickets for a couple of moments. Three shows uh, coming up uh, that have been on sale since December. How has the response been so far? Well, uh, sales have are more than double uh, the last season sales, which included Andrew Lloyd Webber's Fan of the Opera. So I think that's pretty darn good uh, <laughs> under any circumstances. And we're still selling season tickets. You can still get season tickets today at broadwayinhawaii.com. Um, and we'll continue to sell them all the way through, uh, through the, the run of Beautiful in April. Looking forward to that Carol King one. So excited yeah. for yeah. Hamilton, too. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. One more story. Yes. Yeah, so if you're in need of a vacation, how about me, me, me. a trip to the stars? So Virgin Galactic says starting today, tickets are on sale to the public for its 90-minute trip to outer space. It takes you high above Earth for an out-of-this-world experience, but obviously it's not cheap. So a ticket costs $450,000 with a $150,000 deposit required. That and the DeLorean. That's all I want in life. <laughs> and the Blue Diamond. Yeah, and the Blue Diamond. You guys, that's going to do it for This Is Now. Olympic Zone is at 2.30.